uh, Mr. Wallace. Well, what do you want, Chicken? Aren't you ready to retire, sir? No. I'm not going to sleep until that son of mine gets home. And when he does get home, I'm going to have an understanding with this worthless, dissolute girl, crazy young squirt. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to put my foot down. And if you're waiting up to let him in, you might just as well go to bed. Uh, I'll let him in myself. Yes, sir. And leave that door open. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Sleeping dad's lie, eh, Jinx? Mr. Wallace is not in very good humor, sir. He was most annoyed because you weren't home. Well, it was our fault we kept you out too late, Jinx. Oh, but I hate to have you leave me. Well, I, uh... Do you really mean that? Maybe someday you won't have to leave me. That day is coming soon. Get busy. What? Hey, wait a minute, Stu. What's that? I thought it was Jenk. Yeah. I stayed up to have a talk with you. Great idea. I haven't seen much of each other lately. Sorry, Dad, if I kept you waiting. But... I was out with the most wonderful girl. Yeah? The same one you had last week? Nope. Another. Van mm -hmm. sister. Yeah. They're all wonderful until the next one comes along. Oh, I mean it this time. Now listen, son. You've got to settle down. You've played long enough. Making love like a Romeo. Drinking like a fish. Oh, no, no, no. Fish drinks water. Yeah, but he swims upstream. You've been drifting. And I'm tired of it. Are you? Well, I was all ready to blow you up, but... <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. You're a spoiled brat, but it's my fault. But I'm going to give you another chance in the business. You remember Brown down at the office? Sure. He's a collection manager. Yeah, he was. But I fired him. Yeah, his desk will be ready for you at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. But, Dad, that's too early to start collecting bills. People are still asleep. Now, suppose I get down about lunch. I said nine o'clock. Well, you've had one opportunity in the business. You've thrown it away. Now, this is your last chance. I'll take it or leave it. I will. Huh? I'll take it, I mean. Good. Now get to bed and get some sleep. Pleasant dreams, Dad. Oh, say, speaking of dreams, she is the most wonderful girl. Ah. How do you do, my friend? I'm with the wallet. Your bill is over. 
You spare a check? No. Too easy going. Gotta be strong. Gotta be a go getter. Now you look here, young man. You'll pay me that bill right now or I'll cut off your credit. Just like that. No use begging. What? No. I can't believe it. All right, Jenkins. Have him call me when he comes in, will you? Thank you. Van, here's one for the book. Dick's father has put him to work. His father? Mm -hmm. Now listen, sis. If you're going to marry the Wallace millions, you better work fast. I'm going to date him for tonight. And if he gets away from me without a proposal, well, he just isn't human. Polly. That'll have to wait. Where's the office man? Oh, Mr. Little? He's in Mr. Father, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And can you get these reports out today? Uh, no. No doubt about it, sir. <laughs> They're almost ready now. Go out to Somerville and collect this money. Right, Dad. And if you're going to make good on the job, you won't come back without it. How far is it to Somerville? About a hundred miles there and back. Hmm, it's a long, lonely ride. But business is business. So long, Dad. You see what a change in him? Now he's getting down to work. And he's going to make good, isn't he? Yes, sir. It's time for your director's meeting. Mm. You know, you really are a wonderful girl. Haven't you started for some of you yet? Why, uh, it's a long ride, and I thought I'd give this young lady some dictation on the way. You and your girls. Every time you start out to do anything, you never accomplish it. Why? because you drop it to chase every pretty girl that comes along. Maybe you're right, Dad. Remember, you're not Dick Wallace, the playboy, anymore. You're Richard Wallace, the businessman. And when you're out to get something, never let a woman stop you from getting it. I'll take it along to remind me. Go on, Dad. And remember, you're going on business alone. Has the Somerville bus gone yet? No, ma'am. Oh, pardon me. That must have been the bus I saw broken down about a mile back. Broken down? Yeah, but, uh... I'm going to Somerville if I could be of any help. You know, I really should get these to my grandfather. Well, then you better take my advice and not wait for that bus. Thank you. Mention it. Goodbye. Are you uh, going back to town later? Oh, no, I live here. You do? 
charming place, Demoiselle. Well, what do you do here evening? I help my grandfather. He keeps me pretty busy. Well, that's sad. Uh, I mean, good. Well, you aren't busy every night, are you? I was just thinking that we could... Uh... I wouldn't want you to trouble yourself. Oh, heavy reading, this. I'd better carry them for you. I'm Dick Wallace. How do you do? Well, I must have keep Grandfather waiting. Oh, pardon me. Uh, may I use your phone? Certainly. You sure you don't mind? Well, of course not, after you were so obliging. Well, you know, if I'd waited for that bus, I'd... Well, you wouldn't have gotten in until after dark. It was a burnout bearing. It takes hours to fix those things. By one time, I broke down with a burnout bearing. Mm -hmm. Tell me where Dr. Hall lives. Oh, you mean Doc Hall, the minister. Well, you know where the church is? Yeah. Well, that isn't it. There's next door. The sermon of mine would be incomplete without a reference to one of the greatest founders of the church. Listen, brothers and sisters, to the voice of St. Augustine. The heathen rage and the ungodly beat upon the gates of the temple. Are you the Reverend Hall? Come in, won't you? Pardon me. I'm a little hard of hearing. There's no use forcing yourself on me. After the way you lied about the bus, the quicker you get out, the better. I beg your pardon. I'm a busy businessman. Please don't waste my time. What do you want? Money. So, Mazuma. Let me handle it. My granddaughter takes care of all my business affairs. Oh, see, I, I'm sorry, but we haven't got the money now. Very well, thank you. Good day. What are you going to do? You'll hear from our lawyer. Oh, please. No, the quicker I get out of here, the better. Oh, you must let me explain. We had the money, but... Oh, if I could only make you realize demands on a minister's charity. How many men and women and children need clothes and food? How much good that money has done. That a girl. I'm proud of you. Don't worry about that bill, sir. I'll see if I can get you a good long extension. Where's the phone? 
the money? Did you get the money, yes or no? You can't get tough with an old man who's feeding a lot of starving children with your money. What's that? You granted them an extension? The daughter told me all about it. And she's a wonderful girl. Chasing out the girls, eh? Yes, she's a wonderful girl. All right, you're through. You're fired. See? I told you it'd be all right. Here's everything you signed. Now pay us when you can. And if you never get around to it, we're glad to see what good use you're making of the money. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. Sir. Oh, don't bother. Oh, uh, say you'd better go put those in some safe place. I will. I'm sorry I was rude to you. I thought you were like any other man who'd pick up a girl. I guess I was wrong. Are you sure you have to work with your grandfather tonight? Minister's granddaughter shouldn't tell Fib. I was just being tactful. Suppose I didn't work. What well, would we do? Well, don't you know some splendid, glorious place where we could go have dinner? Hmm? And then we could go for a ride in my car for a while. And then it's a date. Might you be, Cupid? No, my name's Joe. Well, I appreciate your interest. I knew it went there all the time. Yeah. Is this the only garage in town? Yep. How much do you want for it? What do you got? Well, I'll trade you even. It's a swap. Well, now that I'm in the garage game, how's business? What are you doing tonight? 
You. In person. You aren't sorry at me, are you? Fill it up, please. Now I've got you where you'll have to listen. In full. Haven't you heard anything from him? No, miss. Not a word. But I understand it's on account of some girl his father discharged him. What did the old man say about it? Nothing, sir. He's given orders not to mention his name. Get us a drink, will you, Jenkins? A million dollar catch. You let him slip right out of your hand. In fact, right out of your arms. She must have been a fast worker. That car must be running on its reputation. Doesn't she ever buy gas? Yeah, she goes all the way to town for it. Say, how would you like to make a half a dollar? Bad puncture, miss. Take about ten minutes to fix it. I'm in a hurry. Just put the spare on, please. No sooner said than done. You're not mad at me, are you? Please, I don't want to talk about what occurred. But I do. I've been waiting for a chance to apologize. It doesn't matter. Oh, doesn't it? It means more than anything else. It's the only thing that's kept me here. You mean you stayed in Somerville because... Because of you. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Well, when you ask me that way, I, I can't say no. Then we're going to be friends? Oh, just wait till I change this tire. Somebody lost a lot of tax.
we will take up the collection, remembering that it is more blessed to give than to receive. my text today from the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Never has the force of these words been brought home to me more strongly than now. I owed a considerable amount of money which I couldn't pay. I had prayed that this would be forgiven me. My prayers were answered by the young man who came to collect a debt. His kindness gave me new courage, new faith, and I thought how much better the world would be if all of us were as ready as he was to forgive the debts of others. Ah, not only the debts of money, but also the debts of wounded vanity, hurt pride, misunderstanding. Amen. Are you the young woman that persuaded him to extend that loan? Well, he's fired. Yeah, for being so kind to you. Well, the least you can do is to show a little courtesy in return. Well, get in touch with him and tell him to call his office. You ungrateful little dog. Oh. Someone just phoned from your office. They said you had lost your job on account of us. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, don't worry about that. Well, I mean, for the way I've been treating you. I shouldn't have punished you for, for liking me. Liking you? Mary and I have been crazy about you. Well, you have? I never had it so bad before. It's the first time I... You mean that? Mr. Wallace had something to say to me. As soon as I can find my earphones. Pardon me. They must be in my room.
How do you like it, old lady? We fooled them, honey. They'd never guess we were on a honeymoon. By the way, dear, there's something I've got to tell you. Are you sure it's something I want to hear? Well, it uh, is sort of a confession. Mm, then I don't want to hear it. I don't care about your other girl. As long as the affairs are over and done with. But I've got to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that you're married to a millionaire, sir. My father is old man Wallace, the capitalist. The man with a checkbook. The Mr. Wallace? The old Wallace himself. Oh, he didn't even come to your wedding. He didn't know about it. I wouldn't give the old grouch a chance to spoil it. No, he couldn't be that terrible. When are you going to phone to break the news to him? And have him come rushing over here? Listen, this is the first honeymoon we ever had. You don't want him to ruin it that quick, do you? Uh, do you think you like me? Oh, you're not going with me when I break the news. I'm going to breeze into that lion's den alone. And I'll pull his teeth before I trust him with you. When are you going to tell him? Ooh, come on, Mr. Wallace. Hello, how's my dad? Well, sir, his, his health is very good, but I... You're fired! Give that girl a week's pay and get me another secretary. Well, young man, what are you doing here? Back on the job, Dad. Mm -hmm. Come in here. Well? Are you all right? Sure, why? Mm -hmm. I thought something could have happened to you. Trouble, or women or something. Oh, I'm sorry if I worried you, Dad. Mm -hmm. Where have you been? In Somerville. Oh. Locked up? Running a garage. Oh. You make any money? <laughs> Not a dime. <laughs> you make any while I was gone? Yeah, about a hundred thousand. Well, maybe I better stay away. Yeah, do you think you could buckle down to business now and stop fooling around and chasing women? I know it. Come here. What's happened to you? What's changed you? Congratulate me. For what? I'm married. You're what? Yes, I'm married. And she's a wonderful... A wonderful girl, a wonderful gold digger. That's not true. Well, you go back and tell her she'll never handle a cent of my money. She's not that kind. Oh, shut up. Listen to me, get I... Get out. Will you listen to me? Get out and get rid of her. Let me explain. Now, get rid of her or you'll never handle a cent of my money. Now, get out. Get out. I won't get rid of her, and I don't want any of her. What's this? Nothing to worry about. Just had a fight with Dad. Oh, a fight with your father? That's an old family custom. This is the last one. Not even old man Wallace can say the things he said about you and get away with it. What did he say about me? Well, he took it for granted that you married me for his money. Oh, gee, but I didn't even know you had any money. That's what I tried to tell him. He wouldn't listen. Well, that's that. No. I'm going to go and straighten it out. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. And just as soon as I can get my things on. He expects me to come crawling back to him on bended knees. He's crazy. I'm not going to have my wife insulted. What? Don't you see, darling? If I've separated you and your father, I just got to bring you back together again. Well, maybe you're right. I know I'm right. You're to apply a job? Oh, I'm a very experienced secretary. Too experienced, I'm afraid. You needn't wait. Well, I'll be stopped. Aren't there any ladies left in the world?
Now, that's enough. Keep them out. I don't want to see any more of them. Yes, Mr. Warren. Uh, I wish to see Mr. Wallace on personal business. Your name? I'm Miss Boyd. Uh, Mr. Wallace is very busy today. But well, my business is very important to Mr. Wallace. You tell me what it is. And you can't go in. I told that fool not to let anyone in. Well, he did try to stop me. Oh, he did, eh? And you walked in anyhow. Now, here's the girl I want for my secretary. You can start in right now. Uh, take off your things. I've got to catch up with my work. Now, that's the kind of a girl we need. A girl with a mind of her own. One who can start things for herself. A girl with, uh, with, uh... An initiative? Correct. You know, I've got an idea you're going to be all right. Take a letter. Send a check to this attorney. 10% of his bill. Tell him I pay lawyers to win cases, not to lose them. You get that? Yes, sir. Now, this one. Hello, dear. No, don't send up any dining room service. What do you think this is, a honeymoon? I said we don't... Oh, hello, Marion. Where have you been? I've met your father. And he actually likes me. Mm -hmm. Well, but not if you're wife. No, he doesn't even know I'm married. He didn't like me as a secretary. Yes, uh -huh, a secretary. Yes, I'm working for him as a secretary. Yes, a permanent. Oh, I I'll tell you all about it when I get there. What was that you said? I said that there's some honeymoon. Uh, oh, I've got loads of work to do, dear. I'll hurry as fast as ever I can. And then he said I was the best secretary he'd ever had. He sent me in his car. Well, I won't have you working for the old walrus. Now we've been all over that and it's settled. I'm going to hold that job until I'm sure he likes me. And then we'll tell him. Come on now, give it a count of yourself. You went out, didn't you? Yeah. I met an old friend and his sister. Oh, we're invited out to dinner this evening. That is, if you're not too tired. No, I'm not. But I've got to be on the job early in the morning. Oh, well, it won't be a big evening. We'll dine and dance and... Well, you always have a good time at Dan and Tom. I wonder what she's like. Oh, she's probably one of those corn-fed country girls. It would take one like that to get a man away from you, dear. Maybe you should go on a corn diet. <laughs> you would say something like that. Hello, Hi, Jane. Hello. Meet the wife. Polly, uh, Agnes, and Kate. This is Mary. How do you do? Well, then, make yourself at home, darling. Your husband always did, didn't you, Dick? I did have a case on Polly once. See, I don't blame you. I think she's charming. Thank you. You haven't met the boys yet. This is George and Harry and my brother, Van. How do you do? How do you do? Ooh, so do pop. No, thanks. Oh, try one. You like it. Uh, I'm not used to it, really. For all the more for the rest of us. Aren't you right? Here's to the uh, bride. Thank you. Shall we go into dinner? Ah, food. I'm positively starved. Oh, oh, no, you don't. Even newlyweds, you know, must have good manners. Dan is taking you in. Mm, maybe we'd rather get the break. Married man. Oh, well. No matter what you do, I suppose I'd forgive you anyway. Good 
Good morning, Mr. Rimmel. Good morning. Uh, straighten up the desk, miss. But, uh, I said straighten up the desk. Uh, yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Wallace. Sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Who straightened up my desk? Uh, I did it, sir. Now I can't find anything. Get out of here. Get out. Headache? No. Now, Mr. Wallace, I've been with you long enough to know when you have a headache. Well, what if I have? What's this? Oh, drink it quick. No, I never take drugs. Please. No, I don't need it. Oh, come on, now. don't be a baby. There, that wasn't so bad, was it? No. You know, you're the first girl I've had around here who cared whether I lived or died. You're going to get a raise. Bring this up to the house, and I'll go over tonight. You ought to catch up on your sleep, sir. What? You ought not to work tonight, sir, and I know it. Think of your health, sir. I took care of myself before you were born. Who are you to dictate to me? You're fired. Oh, Mr. Wallace, Get please. out. been with you? Oh, ten years. Oh. Oh, well, tell him to stay. Don't have to go. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Wallace changed his mind about that errand. Oh, oh, I, I see. I see. Come, come, get to work. How do you feel now? Better, thanks. But we'll never get this cleaned up today. Well, I could work tonight. Are you sure you haven't a date? We're not an important one. I'll phone and cancel it. but I have a date with my new boyfriend, the boss. Oh, Marion, you can't call it off. Oh, that's all right, dear. You run along and spend the evening with your friend. Well, maybe I'll see you later. Bye. I haven't had a chance to thank you. But if there's ever anything I can do for you... No, thanks. I'll remember. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Wallace? 
We'll work at my home tonight, Miss Boyd, if you don't mind. Mind? Oh, I'd like to visit your home. Okay. Oh, isn't this lovely? You go on up to my study, Miss Boyd. Oh, Jenkins, show Miss Boyd upstairs. I'll be with you presently. That's Mr. Richard's room. This is a study. Prodigal son has been welcomed home. Yes, sir, the old walrus may be opening the family iceberg to me right now. You know, I think I'll call up and find out if I'm a millionaire. Again. Medicine 2134. Richard, isn't it? Yes, I know your voice. Have you got rid of that woman yet? No. And I don't intend to. That was my son. I suppose you heard about his latest exploit, letting himself get married for his money. Have you met his wife? No, and I won't. Well, how do you know she's what you think she is? Because that's the only kind he was ever interested in. Oh, she may be different. Well, all women are not like yourself, you know. Oh, if he'd only married a woman like you. Yeah, but I wouldn't wish that on you. Never marry a rich man's worthless son. You'll regret it. How do you know he's worthless? Have you ever given him a chance to make good? I've given him job after job. In your own business. You treat him like a small boy, I'll bet. No one can succeed unless they're on their own. Hmm, I never thought of it that way before. Why don't you give him that chance? You know, a chance to make something of himself. And if he's anything like you, I know he'll succeed. If you are so sure you're right, would you be willing to bet your own future on it? How? I'll back him up for any amount up to a million dollars. If you'll go into business with him. I'll get in touch with him tomorrow. Why not tonight? I have a number that'll reach him. How did you get that number? Well, he'd call to office every single day and he wouldn't even talk to us. Uh, uh, Parkway 9872. Hello? Yes, ma'am. It's Rick. Hi. <laughs> Hello? This is Mr. Wallace's secretary. There he is. Uh, yes, I have a message for you from Mr. Wallace. He says he will back you in business up to a million dollars. What? No, he does not want you to get rid of your wife. But expects her to make good along with you. Tell him the jury on it, too. Uh, Mr. Wallace wants to see you in his office in the morning to explain details. Who says I didn't marry a gold digger? What? What was that? Oh, uh, nothing, Marion. Uh... Oh, yes, all right. Good night, Mr. Wallace. I told you so. All is forgiven. He'll start me in business up to a million dollars. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, isn't that wonderful, Dave? Let's have a real celebration. Like we used to. Say, uh, Van, there's a case of champagne left. Oh, watch me crack that open. Well, let's get something snappy.
Oh, pardon me. I'm wasting your time. I would like to get through as soon as possible. Yeah. <clears throat> well. Well, we got through early, thanks to you. Oh, I mean, that's my taxi. Good night, Mr. Wallace. Good night, my dear. better now? Worse. I'm Mrs. Wallace. Is my husband here? I believe the guests have all gone, but I'll see. Mrs. Wallace is here, sir. Marion? I bet she's been waiting for me at the hotel. Dick. Should have been here, honey. What a party. Well, have you located her? No, sir. Well, get busy and call up the police department. Something's happened or she'd be here. I suppose you mean Marion. Well, something has happened. She's left me. Left you? The woman you wouldn't see. She came here to show you how wrong you were. She took the job to sell herself to you, to bring you and me together again. And she made good. Yeah, but I didn't. I lost her. You mean she'll never come back? Never. She's not that kind. Well, we'll see about that. Where would she go? I tell you, Dad, it's no use. She's the only woman I ever cared for. Except your mother. And I'm going to find her. I tell you, Dad, it's useless. I've been to Somerville. She and Dr. Hall have gone. Nobody knows where. So, you weren't good enough for her, eh? You didn't think she was good enough for you. Why, well, you young... Oh, don't let's quarrel again. Give me another chance. You think she will? Maybe. I've proved that I'm worth it. Please. Long distance? Somerville? Oh, put them on. Hello. How are you? Very well, thanks. Nice trip. And Dick? How is he? Oh, he's back at work again. Doing splendidly. I, I never would have believed that a boy could change so much. The office needs you, too. Oh, Mr. Wallace's new secretary is terrible. He wishes you were back. So do all of us. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. I wonder... Oh, 
uh, Mr. Richard isn't in, madam, but I expect him soon. That's all right. I'll wait in the study. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Wallace, you're, uh... Hello, darling. Hmm. You do look like the tired businessman. I'm not going to have you running yourself down like this any longer. I prescribe first, dinner at the Lido, a snappy musical show, and... No, thanks, Polly. Well, if you don't feel up to it tonight, perhaps some other night. Polly, I'm through playing around. Very sweet of you to think of me and all that, but, well, that's the way I feel about it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Marion. 